that dances around. And you can do it with any kid that has a clue, you know, that hasn't been destroyed by adults. If you're a little three-year-old kid or four-year-olds are better for this, if you go like this, like, they know exactly what's going to happen. You know, they're ready to dart back and forth. And they'll usually smile. And, and kids love rough and tumble play, which is now basically illegal in all daycares. And it, seriously, it seriously is. It, kids need it so desperately because it teaches them the limits of their body and your body, and it teaches them what's painful and what isn't, and it teaches them the dance of play, and without that, they're just little disembodied blobs, like they have no finesse. What, that's what you're checking out when you dance with someone, you know. You're seeing if they have that, that fluency and facility for mutual reciprocal action Im embodied in them, and if they're kind of like this, you know, and, and just have no sense of rhythm and don't pay any attention to you, and all of that, you have reason to question whether they actually inhabit their body and whether they can engage in a mutual interaction, a physical interaction that's going to be reciprocal and mutually satisfying. It's really important to check out. And a lot of that rough and tumble play, even interactions between a child and its mother, if you have a happy mother and a happy infant and you videotape them and you speed up the videotape, you'll see that they're dancing. So one responds, then the other responds, then the other responds. It might just be with eye gaze and, and movement and all of that, but there's a dynamic interplay, which you don't see with depressed mothers and their infants. So, okay, so back to play. So the little rat who got, is the subordinate one, he has to do the invitation, and then the big rat can allow, agree to play, because he's in the dominant position. But if you pair them repeatedly, and this is really worth thinking about, because See, morality emerges out of repeated interactions. Because you might say, well, if you're only going to interact with someone once, you might as well just take advantage of them and run off. That's what a psychopath does, by the way. And there is, there is room in the environmental niche for psychopaths, but they have to keep moving around, because otherwise people figure out who they are. So they just move around, and they can take advantage of one person, you know, maybe five times or ten times or something, and then the reputation spreads, and they've got to get the hell out of there. But, so it's not a good long-term strategy, unless you can't think of a better one. So anyways, if you repeatedly pair these rats, unless the big rat lets the little rat win at least 30% of the time, the little rat will not ask the big rat to play. And that is, it's a staggering discovery. It's a staggering discovery because you've got the emergence there of an of a implicit morality, essentially, that's even incarnated in rats that emerges across multiple play sessions. It's like, yes, exactly, that's exactly what Piaget said about the emergence of morality. It's exactly the same idea at the rat level. So it's, it's a massively, and the fact that there's a circuit, a separate neurophysiological circuit, that's actually specialized for that sort of thing, is also a big deal. Now the other thing Panks have figured out is that if you deprive juvenile rats of the opportunity to engage in rough and tumble play, their prefrontal cortexes don't develop properly, and they become impulsive and restless, and then you can fix them with methylphenidate or Ritalin. And those are the drugs that are used to fix hyperactive kids, most of whom are male. And that's because, well, really, you're going to take your six-year-old, your five-year-old, you're going to put them in a desk, you're going to get them to sit there for six hours. That's your plan, right? That's a stupid plan. And they're, they're denied the opportunity to engage in play. And that means that their ability to become social is being impaired. It may cause neurological impairment, that's what the rat evidence suggests. And then you suppress that with amphetamines. Because amphetamines actually don't activate the play circuit, they activate a different circuit which will suppress the play circuit. So, it's very, very, it's not very wise. And I'm not going to go off on that tangent, because I could tell you why the school systems were set up that way, which I probably will at some point, because it's quite an interesting story in and of itself. And it's the reason all you guys are sitting in desks right now. Somebody laughingly referred to this once as grade 15, which I thought was pretty funny, given the, a look at the bloody place, you know. Oh, hideous. And, <clears throat> okay. So, now, 